is Anne over at Plant Obsessed, and today we're going to take a look in on the European Night Crawlers. Now, I have two bins that are both 27.5 gallons or 104 liters for you metric type uh, in the reasonable rest of the world. And uh, so we're going to take a look in on them. This one here is the ones that I started from 500 cocoons back in May of 2019. And they're, according to when I harvested them, I think I weighed them out to be about two pounds. And then on the other side, with an identical size container, which is actually literally the other si side of this uh, barrel, are my uh, European night crawlers that are adult. I got a pound of adults from Gatano at Northeast Worm. So let's take a look at these guys today. Okay, so here we are in the uh, portion that was the cocoon only worms. Now, by overwhelming majority, when I put out the uh, request for people's opinions about whether or not we should start running these like uh, I do blue, which is do using the wedge method, uh, an overwhelming number of people said that we should start uh, doing this like blue. So everybody who wanted this to be like a big bin, sorry, you were, you were outvoted. So I'm just going to turn up this and see if there's any food left. Looks like, no, I'm not finding a worm ball per se, but good concentration. These appear to be juveniles. They're very little. Uh, but remember, this is the one that was the cocoon only bin. These worms were not very big to begin with. But it looks like they're already starting. Got some tomato seeds in there that they haven't finished yet. But um, since it is tis the apple season here in my house, I've harvested my apples. And um, so I have apple goo for these guys today. So, but I am going to take and start pushing everything that is, um, you know, mostly finished castings. I'm going to start pushing that to the other end. And then that will give me room uh, to start doing the wedge method over on this side. Okay. So there are some good size worms in here. It's just far and few in between. can really tell the difference in how fluffy this is. Um, as opposed to the bedding that I normally make that has a lot less coconut coir. This is just really nice and fluffy. And for some of the people who are like, oh, my worms keep escaping. Worms are just nosy. They tend to run amok. And when they're disturbed, you know, especially since nobody is down here in the basement, um, honestly, these worms are used to having nice peace and quiet when I come down here. They do kind of run around on the side. You can see here on the edge that they, uh, if you see these little castings on the edge, it's because at some point they uh, started wandering around to see what was going on. But yeah, I'm going to take the top layer of dried bedding and put that down first. I know there's a lot of uh, new worm farmers out there that uh, wonder, you know, what kind of worms should I start with? Now, you know, from a strictly durable, um, bulletproof type of worm, your red, your red wiggler really can't be beat. It puts up with a lot of uh, new worm farmer mistakes. Too wet, too dry, too much food, not enough food. Honestly, you can't really do anything. <laughs> You know, too too drastic to them to uh, hurt them. But I, I would say that the next easiest to take care of would be these guys, the European Nightcrawler, which if you're being scientific about it, is the Encina Hortensis. My Latin's not that great, so forgive me. Um, but these are also similar to the Red Wigglers where they just live kind of in the leaf layer, but the European Nightcrawlers do dig a little deeper. And even though, like when you see here in a minute, you'll see the worms from Gatano are very, very big, um, they look like regular earthworms. These are not regular earthworms. 
even though they sort of look like it. Um, they live in colonies. You'll see them ball up when there's a big bunch of food. Um, so they're similar to the red wigglers like that, even though they can get to a very large size. Uh, normal earthworms that come up after it rains and end up on the sidewalk, those are solitary creatures. They don't like to live together in the same sort of bin. They live one to a hole that's about six feet deep. Um, well, that's a lumbricus species around where I live here in central Illinois. And they have like a flat tail. These uh, European nightcrawlers do not have a flat tail. Um, but they're solitary animals. They live by themselves in one single little poked, you know, stick hole in the ground kind of area. And they don't live in the, the fluffy layer of the forest like these guys do. So that's one of the differences. I mean, for right now, these look like red wigglers because they're so small. But when you get to the other side and you see the big ones, you're like, oh, those kind of look like the kind that we have out in the yard. They're not the same. Okay, so here we go with the food. I'm not going to give them the full gallon. I'm going to give them a half a gallon. Because these are European night crawlers and they do enjoy their bedding. Um, probably equal with their food scraps. So we're going to give them this apple goo, but then we're also going to give them some new bedding. And then I'm just going to put some of the existing castings on top, make sure that there's a lot of good bacteria in there. And then uh, just kind of flatten everything out here. For anybody who's watching, um, let's see if I can adjust the camera just a little. Now I'll just take you over there. These are my avocado trees that are growing here in the basement. They only get light for a couple days out of the week. I don't know what they're doing there. But I mean, they're doing pretty good. All right, let's go over to the big worm side. And for everybody who uh, is uh, having problems with uh, fruit flies, fungus gnats, what have you, what I have here is nothing more than a coffee cup and a little bit of uh, apple cider vinegar and just a small drop of dish, dish soap. And I've had this sitting in here for uh, probably a month. I try and uh, clean it out every week. Uh, but little, this is all nothing complicated. No, it just sits here on this uh, little concrete pad and uh, collects bugs. Got a couple of these down in the wormery, and it's uh, catching everything from fruit flies to uh, regular flies. You can see the big ones in there. So uh, don't need anything special. Just a cup of vinegar with a little bit of soap in it, and bam, dead. All right, here we are over on the big worm side. This is where my uh, the worms from Gatano over at Northeast Worms are living. Let's have a look and see what they're doing today. Looks like they're still messing with that pineapple. It looks, oops. All right, there was a baby in there somewhere. So they are breeding. Oh, there we go. Some big worms there. Now, another good thing about these worms, especially if you live up north like I do, they are a lot more tolerant of um, colder temperatures. And here in my basement, even though it's inside the house, it still will get reasonably cool down here. And these guys, they don't care. They'll be fine. Doesn't bother them at all. They will keep going. And their total range is 45 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 7 to 26 Celsius. Of course, they, their ideal range is from 60 to 70 Fahrenheit or 15 to 21 degrees Celsius. But I find they do just fine down here in the basement year-round. I don't have any problems either way. Let's see what they've done with their food, because we didn't find any food in the little guy's bin. Which kind of uh, leads us to our, our question that we had last week, which is, you know, are some big worms versus a bunch of little worms, which one will eat the food faster? I think the answer that we can see pretty clearly right now is that a bunch of little worms definitely eat more than um, 
larger worms. But one thing that I can tell is that these guys are definitely creating a lot of good bedding, or uh, taking the bedding and creating a lot of good castings. I mean, if you look at with the differences between the paper and the, um, you know, what's finished and what's not finished. Okay, these these are cocoons. I think it's pretty ideal to see these together here. Oh, come on, get over here. You've got this bright lemon yellow, freshly laid cocoon here, and then you have this almost orange color, which is probably going to hatch pretty soon. And these are big cocoons. When they come out, they're good-sized little worms. Um, these guys usually, inside their cocoons, there's usually only one baby. Uh, whereas when you've got the European night crawlers looking at their eggs versus the, the red wigglers or the blue worms, there might be four, five, six little baby worms in with the um, red wigglers or the blue worms. I don't think I've ever caught the African night crawlers um, coming out of a, a cocoon, so I can't really say one way or the other there. But these guys generally only have one, uh, and I, I have seen that. If you're interested in that, I have a playlist for my microscope videos, and I will put that at the end of this video so you can see it. Also, I'll put the, um, all of the European Nightcrawler videos where you can see them grow up from 500 little cocoons all the way up to the other bin we were just at. So this is another thing. This is, uh, even though this is my European Nightcrawler bin, you can tell they're pretty inspired to get out of the light. These are very bright shop lights. Look how big that cocoon is. This, I mean, that's one of the things about the European nightcrawlers is they have huge cocoons. So, you know, here's my thumbnail, and there is the cocoon. It's a freshly laid one because it's yellow. But I tell you, some of the other ones, they are so small, you can't even see. Oops, I was going to show you. Where did you go, little guy? So, like, this worm is probably a week or so old, but I just saw a hatchling a second ago. But they're, you know, they're probably half the size when they come out of the cocoon. So they're, they're not, you know, you can tell the difference between these guys and pot worms, you know, when they're coming out of the cocoon. Um, when you've got, you know, the baby red wigglers, you can't hardly tell the difference between them and pot worms. They're so little when they're born. So let me go ahead and turn over everything here. And I can, ooh, dancing worm. Oop, wow, just cartwheel. It's like an Olympic gymnast worm. But, you know, we love to see worms and probably not going to get a worm ball. It has been a little over a week since we've been in here. Um, <laughs> okay, I'm being, being a jerk. The worms don't like it, but I know everybody likes to see worms. Ooh, it's, not, it's not heavy enough yet to kind of hold itself, hold itself still. And another thing about these guys, you see that all the feeding has been happening at this end here. Another huge cocoon. Um, you know, I'm finding just as many worms down at this end where it hasn't been fed for a month. Now, this whole room started up, uh, I built it uh, 4th of July weekend. And then, um, let me see, I have notes. So I built the room the 4th of July. We did the water harvest of the little ENCs on the 14th of July. And then on the 20th of July, we incorporated these large worms from Northeast Worms. Oop, there's a baby one having a fit. Is it a baby or is it a blue? Where are these things coming from? I don't know. He's pretty slow. Maybe he's a baby. All right. But, you know, they, uh, they've been at it for a couple of months in here. And, you know, they're seeing, you're seeing worms at the full length of the bin here. 
whereas if this was a red wiggler bin, they would be all down here where the newest food is. They wouldn't be all over the place. But since these are night crawlers, they do enjoy their bedding um, almost as much as, you know, if not more than uh, regular table scraps. All right, well, I'm going to create a spot here since we've decided to do the wedge method. Take last time's um, stuff and we'll get some new bedding for them. Now, I keep separate bedding uh, for exactly the same reason that I saw that blue worm, or I thought it might be a blue worm. I thought that maybe, um, you know, when I make the castings, or make the uh, bedding, that when I put the cocoon inoculant, or, you know, the microbe inoculant in here, that, uh, you know, I might have taken over some worms or maybe, you know, some cocoons. So when I make the bedding for the ENCs and for the African Nightcrawlers, I use their own castings to start the prepared bedding with. Okay, so this is apple goo, leftovers from me making wine out of apples. So it's gone through a juicer and it's been frozen, so not very likely that anything is going to be alive in there. Okay. Kind of put that over there just a little bit to cover it. Okay, guys, if you like the video, give it a muddy thumbs up. If you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button. And if you want to know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, ring that bell icon. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms. And everybody, have a good day.